I'm Diana Fisher-Gomberg. I live at 290 Islington Road, which was always the Eisenbud's house for my first 20 years, I was told. Now it's known as, as uh, the Gomberg Center for the Performing Arts. And that's because we've been hosting the Halloween party for at least 20 of my 26 years so far. Uh, they, the McNeils waited almost a year before hitting me up to host it. And, uh, and at the time, I was very young. I was like, sure, no problem. And they're like, really? Because it's going to be a lot of people, a fair amount of drinking. It's a little crazy. And I was like, I, my first home, I was like, oh, I'm moving in. There's all these middle-aged homeowners. How bad can it be? Uh, but anyway, it was awesome. And we had this huge crew to help us move our furniture out of the first floor to make room for this big dance party with a band coming in and neighbors singing all these different uh, songs um, with the, the full range of talent. And we'd have rehearsals at the McNeil's basement, which were really, really fun. And um, and that was you know really our big introduction into the social life of the uh, neighborhood. But it was kind of a funny way to start because we met all these neighbors as, as new people, but we only, we met them while they were in total costume with masks. And so then we'd be like out walking around and people would say, oh, thanks so much for hosting the party, Diana. Thanks, Richard. And we'd be like, you're welcome. Uh, were you the wolf? Were you like Dracula? I don't, I don't know. So it was kind of funny, but it was, it was great. And everybody was very welcoming and warm. And I had no idea like what, how lucky we were to pick a neighborhood that really did have these events that the, the McNeils were largely responsible for planning. We, we just kind of had to open the doors and clean up. Um, but they were, they were fantastic. We just thought it was a beautiful neighborhood because of the river and the Oval and Lions Field and Norm Biga, but it's really been a great community too. So uh, I feel very lucky to be part of the Islington Peninsula community. Today, it's been fun seeing some uh, faces I haven't seen in a long time. I'm like seeing them now, pointing them out. And other people who, um, who I never knew because they grew up in the neighborhood before I moved in, but I recognize their last names. Thanks for we have, thank goodness we have name tags. Um, so that's really fun and can compare notes because they might be my age, but uh, you know, we didn't overlap. So it's been uh, a great, great event to see people who I used to know and people I never knew, but can, can hear about the neighborhood and how much things have changed. Uh, I'm Lynn Holbein. I lived on 227 Islington Road with my husband Bruce and our three kids for 43 years. And we moved there when I was pregnant uh, in 1977. We bought our house from Joe and Bill Cleary who moved around to Kingswood Road. And it was a magical place to raise kids. Absolutely magical. Um, I counted up I, uh, the other day how many families had kids are exactly our kids' ages, and there were 10 of them, which part of the reason was it was low housing prices then. A lot of mothers who were staying home in that era because houses were so cheap. But there were, and if you you look on still behind the McNeil's house and the Shapiro's house and the Boucher's house, there's this whole section that has no fences, and the kids just washed back and forth and back and forth, dropping in between all the houses. It was like a Shangri-La, like a place that time forgot. So um, my son, uh, my sons both have. Con contact with kids they know back then and it was really a blessing so thank you Islington Road and thank you especially Jill McNeil for keeping everybody in touch with each other. I'm um, seeing everybody today is really amazing and I appreciate the name tags however not that well, people have changed that much but <clears throat> it's always nice although you don't want to look at their chest too hard you know <laughs> um, but I just especially some people's kids who grew up on Islington Road, but now they're 40, 50 years old. The name tags are great, but the whole event is really great, and I really thank the team that put it together. So, my name is Jonathan Keyes. I lived on 20 Duffield Road. My family moved there from Natick in 1964, and my parents moved 
1979. My, my dad's company moved to uh, Atlanta, Georgia, so I was already out of the house. Uh, two of my brothers, likewise. My youngest brother was still in high school. Uh, so I have a family kind of uh, disbanded in 79. But, uh, yeah, great place to grow up. Always had lots of fun playing with all the neighborhood kids. And, to pick up, you know, baseball games, softball games, hockey games. Hockey was real big. Street hockey. Um, and street hockey. Obviously. Street hockey. Yeah. yeah. We played hockey four seasons a year. Yeah. Always street hockey. You know, I read uh, why so many so many New England kids play left-handed hockey because it's street hockey. Because most people are right-handed. Right-handed. So throw a ball with the right hand. Yeah. Right. It just seemed, it seemed to lend itself to holding the hockey stick. So now, do you all? Do you are you a left-handed? Yeah, because I'm a right-handed. You play right-handed. Hockey? I always played right-handed yeah. hockey. But street hockey was always because you know you often had to go up. Right. So you in your left hand. Right. And so every every went. Oh, I'll, let me just do my quick one, and then we'll get into our stories. Uh, I'm Chuck Cosabum. Uh, my parents bought their house in 1949. Uh, I. Uh, they moved away when I was one year old because they were afraid that I would fall in the river. And they didn't move back until I was uh, seven and I passed my test at the YMCA swim test. And uh, I still managed to go through the ice six times in my times at uh, living on the peninsula. And now getting back to hockey, the cove was the place. Every afternoon, go home, Go home, strat, get your skates immediately down the cove, skate until the lights went on, come home, have dinner, and then, and then go, go back down. Yeah, and skate until the lights went out, and right. then some more. Then, then a little in the dark. Yeah. That's usually when I would fall through the ice, because I couldn't see where I was going. But what rescue you? Oh, no, we were self-sufficient kids. We, were, we took care of ourselves. Right, and we used to skate down into the swamp, which was kind of uh, because the swamp is actually warm, so you'd hit little warm spots and uh, go, through the ice. go through the ice. But that was the fun, was going down and skating in the swamp and coming out intact. <laughs> What did you do on the island? When you were you working, I lobstering? Was, no, I worked. Uh, actually, the first year I lived up there, my brother and I were rebuilding the house. Was that Ralph? Was the house, yeah, okay. House. I just got out of school, uh, so we went up there, re rebuilt the house. I started doing carpentry. Been doing it ever since. And you were pretty um, handy as a kid, though, too. I remember some of those beautiful models you used to build down in your right, basement right, right. in your dad's woodworking shop. Then getting yelled at because you left a mess. Left the tools out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, so John and I basically, uh, we were the same age. We were on the uh, on the bus together going to Burr School. Yeah, I have a picture. I forget what class it was. First grade, second grade, and you and I have ah. If you can, if you can find that and scan it, I would love to see I'll, it. I'll look for it. I, okay. I still have it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we went through uh, all the way to high school. Well, you at high school, you peeled off at uh, yeah. and I, went. I peeled off and went to Murray Road for two years. Kind of dropped out. I didn't take school very seriously. Then went back and graduated from Newton North. Oh, okay. So I, I think what I year did you graduate? I graduated in 77. Oh, okay. So you graduated a year after me. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of switched to friends. You know, friend groups and the whole thing. It got a little funny. Right, right. I made it through. Yeah. yeah. We got to the other Here side. We are. How many years later? It's a great reunion. Yeah. Have you been to his new house? I have. 
Last year we went down and uh, did a little walking tour of the neighborhood. Chuck showed us his house. I think it's great. It's a, it's such a wonderful spot. You know, I think as you get older and you revisit childhood things, the first impression is how small and compact everything seems now. And when you were young, it seemed so big and vast. Um, so the neighborhood, yeah, it seems, you know, the houses look smaller, they look closer together. Uh, I think, you know, the hill's been sled on, and I, I look and say, well, that's not much of a hill. But exactly. it sure seemed like it at the time. Right? Well, we were dodging trees, though, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's great to go back and see it. It was a wonderful place to go. Right. Oh, I, I, I could consider myself very fortunate, and uh, I thank my sisters every time I see them because they basically uh, made the arrangements so I could uh, keep the house and rebuild the house. So you have three sisters? Three sisters. Yeah. Well, only one of them made it today, uh, but she was, uh, she was out in the boat with Larry. She, oh. was, she was there earlier. Okay. Uh, but my other two sisters, none of us wandered very far. One of us, uh, I have one down in West Falmouth, yeah. One in Brockton, and the other sisters in uh, that was here in Burlington. Yeah. Nice. Now uh, you have a brother that wandered very far. I have a brother in Saudi Arabia. He, he's been teaching there for 15 years. He he did the whole. He, he went to college and never left. Basically, you know, he did graduate school, got his doctorate. He's been teaching ever since. And we couldn't have guessed that back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was uh, he was always very very bright. He was very bright. A wonderful pianist. Does he keep up yeah, with that? Yeah, he still plays the piano. Oh yeah, yeah. a wonderful pianist. Yeah. yeah. And what did Ralph end up doing? Ralph ended up teaching uh, high school science. Okay. 30, 30 plus years of that. What town? Uh, Wiscasset, Wiscasset, Maine. Which is? It's uh, on Coastal Route One, about an hour north of Portland. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And Bob is uh, a journalist. He worked for the Portland Press for a number of years. And yep. He's working at Colby College. So, yeah. Yeah. Most of us pursued the, you know, the academic stuff. Good. Yeah. Good. So, and you, you work for who? I, I worked for a small startup co company called General Dynamics. General Dynamics. Yeah. And uh, we, we built uh, anything from uh, submarines to uh, munitions. Yeah. Yeah, uh, everything. Well, Bath Ironworks is still right now. That's part of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I went up there to a number of different uh, events up at Bath. I got, I got to see one of the uh, ships launch. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Even though I had nothing to do with it for some reason, I just uh, pulled a lucky straw and got to go see it. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen now, it you did some shipbuilding too, right? Well, we did. Uh, Really, boat building. The uh, biggest thing I built was a 154 foot sailboat. Uh, I worked for a company in Boot Bay, and we did large cold molded wood, wood okay. construction wood boxes. Okay. And uh, built the sail, some pretty big boats. That's a big boat. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. On the 4th of July in 1972, we looked at the house. I had a baby who was 14 months and I was very pregnant. My daughter Melissa was born the 4th of July. She was born July 18th, so I was just two weeks short of delivering. That was to the house at 81 Islington Road and interestingly enough, it was owned by Susan Regan. So we bought Susan Regan's house, lived there two years, and then Dan and Annie Sullivan's house at 142 Islington Road became available. And we just moved down the street. We literally carried clothes on a pole over to the new house. It was such a, a big leap for us. We had to leave all, the, all of the uh, wallpaper intact, all the rooms <laughs> stayed the same color. In fact, I have a funny story about the kitchen. The kitchen had wallpaper that had trellises with grapes on them. It was pretty cool. 
except one day we looked at the wall and I'm thinking to myself, wow, those leaves, that ivy really is so good until I walked up close and the ivy had grown from off the side of the house in through the, the uh, screen and onto the wall. So crazy. And then we lived um, at 142 for a very long time with two girls um, and moved out, I'm trying to think, maybe eight years ago, ten years ago. What else were you Yes, I have. I have. Um, when I come into the neighborhood, I still have a very good friend, Nancy Horowitz, so I see her all the time. And one time I was looping around and I saw a teep outside and Anna, and Anna said, come and let me show you what we've done with the house. So I have, I've seen the, the house, it looks great, really great. And she doesn't have any ivy growing on the inside of her kitchen. It's a great house, it was a warm house. My kids only have warm thoughts. They had a, a good time growing up. And it was great being at the top of the hill because we could look over the top and see everything. Well, I live um, six months of the year in San Francisco and six months here. So I was here, but I'm going back to San Francisco, of which I now will stay for the year and make two or three trips for two weeks during the course of the year to visit. For opening and closing houses and apartment buildings, you know, even I'm too old for that. <laughs> anyway, it's been a great run. And I hope to keep running or tap dancing. I don't run anymore, but I do tap dance. Yeah, now I tap a lot. <clears throat> tap dance. In fact, a friend of mine and I are teeping, teaching a chair class of tap for um, uh, at LaSalle Village. And Anna Marie Abernathy is in our class. So what goes around comes around. So I am Nancy Horowitz, and I live at 77 Islington Road. And how I ended up here was for a few years, I had been looking to potentially buy a place in either Arlington, Lexington, or Newton. I had a buyer's broker. I had been looking at stuff too expensive, too expensive. I lost a couple places. And then one day, my broker called me and said, I have a place you should look at. Have you heard of the Islington Peninsula? And I said, no, never heard it. And so I, she said, you need to look at this. There's an open house on Sunday. I suggest you come on Friday. So my boyfriend at the time said, it's too far away. I was in uh, Arlington at the time. He was in Stoneham, Stoneham. And so I said, well, come with me. And so we came and drove in, and I didn't even need to go into the house. It was July of 1998, and it was perfect. It looked like a vacation house. It had beautiful gardens. It was on the peninsula. And then I went into the house, and it was empty because the people I bought it from had relocated to Minnesota or Colorado or somewhere. And so there was no furniture in it. But I did notice that the hooks on the walls were all at my eye level, so I knew the person I bought it from must have been my height. I loved it. It had everything I wanted. It had a garage, hard to find on the peninsula. It had a fireplace, it had one and a half, bedroom, uh, one and a half bathrooms, three bedrooms, beautiful garden, patios. I wanted a place where I felt like I was outside when I was inside. So I put an offer on the house right away. They still had the open house. I had to write a letter to say why I wanted the house. I wasn't selling anything to be there. The day that the house uh, open house was and they were considering offers, I was on a sailboat with a friend up in Newburyport. She hit a lobster pot. We are out in the, just beyond the mouth of the Merrimack River getting rescued. And instead of freaking out about, am I getting the offer? Am I getting the house? I'm worried about, am I gonna live? to see another day. We get back in, after dark and the phone rings and it's a 99% probability I've got the house. I had to write a letter as to why I wanted the house. So that's how I ended up here. And then I traveled with my company at the time for the first, I don't know, eight, 10 years, five years that I was living here so I didn't know anybody. And then I stopped traveling 
I got a dog and I started to meet people through my dog. And people said, did you just move in? I'm like, nope, I've been living here for since 1998. I know it's 2004. And it's been just great ever since. So Judith Lieberman and I became excellent friends. We just started taking walks together. We realized we were in similar lines of work and interested. And uh, she became my best friend in the hood. And it's just been awesome ever since. I'm now on my second dog. I've seen a lot of people that I know. It's interesting because a lot of the, the second generation that's here were kids before I moved in or because I was never around traveling all the time. They were coming of age at that point. But I have seen a number of people who I hadn't seen in a long time here today. And the Schofields, actually, the Schofield boys were born in your early years were in my house. And so I had met Kevin previously because he's driven me to the airport before. And of course I know Susan because she's in the neighborhood and her third Islington Peninsula house. Um, so it was really wonderful getting to know them as well. Take, take it, take hey, it over. Chris Holbein, uh, I started like, no, oh, Chris Holbein uh, started my life on Islington uh, the day I was born um, at 227 Islington Road and uh, my parents lived there for over 40 years, and uh, it's great to be back at this reunion. All right, my name is Todd McNamara. I grew up up 81 Kingswood Road. I was actually born in West Newton on Waltham Street, but we moved when I was in the third grade. Went to Burr School with Chris. We took the bus, we had a great little bus. Um, it was always, everyone was always trying to battle for the back seat. John Cavanaugh, I wish I was here because it reminded me, never got to the back seat. But he, he worked hard at it. Um, great neighborhood to grow up in. A lot of great memories. We had a rope swing that was fantastic. And it's sadly no longer there. It was up behind Nina Melvin's house. And that house has changed hands a few times. Um, I, the name escapes me for the people living there now. They're very nice folks. Uh, but they had, do you remember that rope swing? I you were, yeah, you were yeah. a little younger. I I was a little young. yep. It was set up by the Schofield brothers who were here. Okay. Betta Brada, another guy from the neighborhood, he climbed the tree. He went about 75 feet up a tree. How he got up there, I don't know. But he got up there and he put this swing up. We probably had it for seven or eight years. So we would swim in the Charles River every day during the summer. We always said conjunctivitis, sore throats, oh, no. air infections. It, yeah, it was, it was about 10 years ago in the Boston Globe they had an article, Charles River is now swimmable. Oh. It's like, we were in there for quite a while before that. But it was great. I, I mean, I would love to go back off that swing today. But the tree's gone. I went down the other day and I couldn't find it. Anyways, great, great times. Great to be here. And uh, great to see everyone. I wish it was more kids our age in the yeah. younger crowd. But JK, Johnny Kavanaugh, he actually just, he lives right over there now. But he's busy. He's working today. Uh, my sister's in New Jersey. Uh, I don't know where Brian Nowak, the St. Clair boys. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah. back to Chris. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, well, one memory of Todd was, uh, so I was a few years younger, and I somehow got at school a Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card, <laughs> which was the big deal. And Todd um, and... Uh, came and said, "Hey, look, take a look. Let me take a look at that." And we made a trade. But even at the time, <laughs> I don't remember. Even this. at the time, I knew wasn't very favorable to me. But I was so honored that an older kid, a cool older kid, was talking to me that I just I went with it. So that's all right. <laughs> so how much? What do I owe you? A couple, uh, I probably owe I you a thousand dollars with inflation it's right It's probably now. probably like two bucks right now. So it, it's all right. We'll, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll wave that price. It, but it's been a family legend. I oh. think that, that's. Uh, I didn't know it that. Was sweet. It was sweet. But uh, I just have so many good memories of growing up in the neighborhood. Like, and what was so magical about it was like, there's no fences. There was just like, and so like me and Keith Shapiro and Jason Shapiro, my brother Andrew, uh, Ted Saunders, uh, Jesse Maddox, uh, the the, uh, uh, the Harrington boys. Um, we would, Annie Helm, we would just run through the entire neighborhood and nobody ever gave us any guff for it. Nobody was ever like, get off my lawn. And we would play these games of tag or war 
and it was just such a community and they're like the ability to like play in the streets which and like know that you were going to be pretty safe because people would drive slow uh it, it was really special so you know you have jk to thank for all that leeway because oh. they're like after him they're like do whatever you want boys <laughs> Yeah, JK's, He's finally out of here. JK's a legend. So, <laughs> He's a legend. A great, a great guy. Oh, it was so great for trick or treating. Yeah, it was so great. And I remember my mom uh, worked with a nonprofit, and uh, some kids from inner city Boston uh, would come in. Oh, I remember that. So they would have a good, safe place to trick or treat. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, just run from house to house and get these uh, pillow bags. Jeez, pillow yes, bags. Yes, of course, dude. It's much case. more durable. Yeah, my kids are still using the pillow case. And just like fill it up with candy, and I remember uh, my brother was very—he um, was very frugal with his candy. He would only eat like one a day, so we w it would be like June, and we would open up his bottom drawer, and there'd still be candy. And we're like, bro, finish these off. <laughs> so a lot of self-restraint. Uh, my my niece, my sister's uh, daughter. Um, it is artistic and does a nice job with some with some drawings and just explore that more. Uh, and then my brother's a pianist uh, and really talented and successful pianist down really? in New Orleans. Yeah, in New Orleans, he's doing like Doctor yeah. John type stuff. Yep, and he um, and he was actually like, I mean, he's so good that he was invited to be the pianist for an all African American, a, a, a pretty prominent all African American church there for years so wow. he even um, recorded it on a record uh, called uh, Andrew in New Orleans so that's like the mecca of uh, piano I mean Dr. John is Dr. John well, he just was, passed away sadly oh uh, yeah he was awesome and I, then you got Alan Toussaint uh-huh you got all those old the meters all those New Orleans it? yeah that's New awesome. Orleans funk that's where it started so where do you live now I live in Waylands Waylands Route 30 Calm Ave Go out of our neighborhood, take a right five miles. There I am. But uh, I haven't been recently. I w when they had the Turtle Lane Playhouse, I went to a few of them back Does that then. Still exist? Turtle Lane no, no, it's condos. Um, it's in the process of being condos. Oh man! Like 21 units, yeah, underground parking. That's a bummer. Yeah, it's. I think it's changed hands of who's building it a few times. And oh, hey, here's another one. There's another. Oh yeah. We get that guy in here for an interview. Sean Schofield. John, go. Any stories from growing up in the neighborhood? Oh, jeez. They're looking for the uh, Take my spot. Thanks the for deep, the on. deep down. Sean Schofield, uh, 77 Islington, 16 Kingswood, and then my mother and father bought 215 Islington. So they've had three houses in the neighborhood. Um, grew up right down the street from this guy here and his sister Megan. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't mention her. Yeah, and uh, my older brother's Kevin. My younger brother's Chris. We grew up across from the Regans and the Gardettos and skating on the Cove, jumping off Smith's Wall, which is now the Englanders. Oh, yeah. It, it was like 50 feet, but if you look at it now, it's probably 12. Yeah. Sneaking across the ice, uh, coming home late at night. Sean, Sean was full-blown underneath the ice, looking up. Uh, in the old stream down in the swamp area. Very That's scary. true. To join a club. Still here, though. Still alive. Still, we, we, to tell the tale. But yeah, we had some fun time, parties up in uh, Normbiga. We went out on the island, stayed out there in tents a couple times. Uh, Normbiga, a lot of parties up at Normbiga. We'd go down to Marriott, steal Something the ice from the 30, vending machines. 30 packs, what's a 30 pack? Yeah, all those crazy things. But uh, great place to grow up. I uh, live in Westwood, Mass now. We're in, uh, in Boston forever in Jamaica Plain. We moved out during the pandemic to Westwood. My brother liked it so much, he copied me and, and bought a house on the same street. And my other brother, Chris, is in Dedham. So, uh, but awesome neighborhood, growing up with guys like this. Andy Bunn, Betta Brata-Sarkar, Thomas Jefferson McClure. Brian Eileen, Nowak. Brian Nowak, Eileen, Bunny Kavanaugh, JK. St. Clair, uh, JK. The Regan boys, the Gardettos, the McDonald's were next door, the Hollands. Uh, everybody, the, you know, it's just, a, it's just the best place ever. The Kavanaugh's, you know, Libby, Bunny, JK. We we'll talked about J.K. Yep. Oh, he's he's a wild one. I, I didn't know the story, but Chris Holbein told a story about me that I shysted him out of a Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card when oh, he was geez. like second grade. I'm like, huh? I don't remember that. No, no. Selective memories. <laughs> but uh, I gotta I gotta bring this balloon to my my lovely child who's crying in the car. So I, I gotta run. But I, I've gotta run mic. too. I'm I'm on my way to a wedding. I want to stop by and say hello to everybody now. I love the neighborhood. It's there's no place on earth like it. Going to Corpus Christi with the rest of the uh, Catholics in the group. 
and uh, we all Sister Anne Marie, to Jesus. Father Joe, Ma Father Malone. Malone. You know, some good times. So the disciples anyway. and Peter. <laughs> yes. Anyway, right, we'll, we'll close out right. with that. Some some holy all stuff. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, hi. Um, this is Diane Kemsley Cosaboom. Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming. It's been a delightful day to meet so many people. Um, I'm with Chuck Cosaboom. We live at 17 Malvern Terrace, and I've been uh, had the pleasure of living here for 20 years. And so, so wonderful to meet everyone, including people from the past, my wonderful planning team that had Melinda Gordon and Sally and also uh, Linda Holland and um, Marianne Abernathy. Wonderful people, a great time. And so Sally, let's hear about you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sally bosworth Homan, and I lived on Kingswood Road for four and a half years. And I have to say it was one of the best experiences of my entire life, the best neighborhood I could have ever experienced. My kids grew up to be tremendous people, partly because of that experience, and, and we loved it. And this party has been a blast. And thank you all for coming, and I hope I see you again before too many years pass. Uh, it was a great experience working with our team, too. So. Um, Good luck to all of you. Uh, I hope you stay healthy and happy and happy. And in touch. And in touch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mwah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, no, um, so, so making this event happen today was um, particularly delightful because um, Jill McNeil and Alex McNeil have hosted so many parties in the past. Um, they had the idea of let's get people together from the past. Who knew? Who knew that over a hundred people would sign up both from the present and the past? And all right, we moved inside, but who knew? Still about 75 to 80 um, attended. So uh, very delightful. We love our neighborhood. We love you. And we hope you'll share stories on Facebook um, just because you couldn't record them doesn't mean that you can't be in touch with us. So share your stories, share your pictures, and be well.